Welcome to the webinar discussion of the Masters of Engineering software program offered by the Schulich School of Engineering at the University of Calgary. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a few moments to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta. So this includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, which is comprised of the Siksika, the Ghani and the Gainai First Nation, as well as the Sutina First Nation, and the Stony Nakoda, which includes the Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Good Stony First Nations. The City of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. I am very grateful to live, work, and play here on Treaty 7. So my name is Alison Barrett, and I'll be the MC this evening. I am the Manager of Community and Social Impact at the Schulich School of Engineering, so I get to work a lot on our community outreach and recruitment activities. I'm also joined by Dr. Jeffrey Priest, who's the Assistant Dean of the MEng program. We're also joined by, doc, uh, by Dr. DeWalker Krishnamurthy, who is a professor in the Department of Electrical and Software Engineering. We're also joined by Srikanth Nair, who is an MEng grad, graduate program advisor and Calvin Lack, who's a graduate student recruitment coordinator. Uh, the agenda for this evening, uh, we'll start off by hearing from Dr. Jeffrey Priest. Then Dr. Krishnamurthy will provide an overview of the MN software program at UCalgary. I will then go over some of the exciting outside of classroom opportunities offered by the Schulich School of Engineering, and Calvin will review supports provided by the UCalgary Faculty of Graduate Studies then we will have a question period. But if you do have any questions throughout the session, please feel free to use the chat feature and we will try to answer to the best of our abilities. Uh, so I will now turn it over to, to you. Thank you very much, Alison, for that introduction. Hello, everybody. Um, as Alison said, my name is Jeffrey Priest and I'm the Assistant Dean for the MNG program within the Student School of Engineering here at the University of Calgary. It's certainly my pleasure to, to welcome you to this software engineering webinar. This webinar will provide you with much information that we hope will help you decide to choose the University of Calgary for your graduate studies. At the University of Calgary and within the student school, we have seven MEng programs within, and they cover a range of things from civil engineering, chemical engineering and petroleum, geomatics engineering, environmental engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and of course, software engineering, which is what you are all interested in doing. We have over 1,100 students across our programs at the University of Calgary at this moment. Those graduate students come from all, all over the world and they entrust the University of Calgary for their graduate education. And we take that very seriously. And we've created programs that really are dynamic, that provide you the skills that will help you transition to a new area of focus or career or enhance the technical skills that you have in your chosen area. And whichever path you follow, you can be sure that I and the school will be there to support you on that journey. Calgary is a wonderful university. It's one of the top five research universities in the country. And the Student School of Engineering is one of the top engineering schools in the country. And to add to that, the University of Calgary is one of the best cities in the world to live in. So I'm sure that if you have choose your software engineering program with us, you can really be sure that we're gonna have kick your have kick start your career or elevate your career to new heights, which I think is, is gonna be wonderful. So I look forward to welcoming you all here in May or September, depending on which, whether you've got extent, uh, existing experience or whatever. But I know you're not come here to listen to me. You have come to learn about the M engine software engineering. And so I will pass over to Professor Krishnamari, uh, Krishnamurthy, who will tell you all about the program. Thank you and enjoy this webinar. Oh, sorry. I think you'll just have to unmute yourself. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, so welcome everybody to this uh, information session. Before I start, I would like to kind of uh, give a little bit of a background as to why we started this program, uh, which is basically kind of driven by industry needs, right? Uh, 
So for a number of years now, software engineering has been one of the most sought after program. I mean, for example, in 2023, the job website, skilled worker rated it as one of the top 10 most in-demand uh, profession in terms of jobs, uh, in terms of immigration uh, reports issued by the Canadian government and the government of Alberta. Software engineering consistently ranks as one of the most desirable professions, right? There's uh, uh, really a gap in the number of qualified software engineers available. And as top engineering positions open up, uh, you know, uh, you know, people tend to get hired immediately. Um, so there's been a lot of demand for software engineers historically. It never, it doesn't seem like it's waning anytime soon. But there's also been another uh, phenomenon which is happening, which is that uh, regardless of which engineering profession you are in, you might be a chemical engineer, you might be a civil engineer, you might be a, uh, you know, uh, like a geomatics engineer, like whatever profession you are in. Software engineering skills are becoming very, very crucial to these different disciplines, right? Because of um, uh, digital transformation. A lot of companies now are kind of embarking on digital transformation, which is trying to use digital technologies like AI, machine learning, software engineering, IoT, to extract more value for their businesses, right? So maybe five or six years ago, it might have been okay to graduate with, let's say, a degree in chemical engineering with absolutely no knowledge of software engineering at all, uh, no knowledge of AI and machine learning, but it doesn't look like uh, that's going to be like a, a fulfilling career path now, given that uh, you know there's a lot of emphasis put on uh, digital transformation, right? So there's now a new opportunity opening up. There's a lot of demand for engineers even from other disciplines who are well versed in software engineering, right? Who can, who can take advantage of machine learning, data science, and software development, right? And the last quote here kind of speaks to that, right? And when we talk about software engineering, sometimes immediately our mind goes to Silicon Valley, right? California, or maybe it goes to Seattle, maybe it goes to Toronto. Calgary doesn't uh, really jump as uh, the um, first location when we uh, think about software engineering, but nothing could be actually further from the truth. Uh, if you look at the next slide, uh, we have a lot of um, quotes from industry leaders in Calgary, which attest to the fact that there's a big shortage in uh, qualified software engineers, right? For example, uh, this quote from uh, Jeff LaFrance, who's one of our alumnus, um, is running a very successful virtual reality startup in Calgary. You know, it basically, you know, uh, speaks to having a difficulty. We have this dichotomy in Calgary. We have highly qualified engineers, um, many of them probably looking for new opportunities, yet we have this gap uh, in terms of uh, qualified software engineers, right? So uh, really the, the reason this program was formed was to kind of bridge the gap, right? We have all these uh, qualified engineers, like what, how cool it would be if you can give them software engineering skills so that they can kind of uh, fill the gap in software engineering job market, right? Uh, if you go to the next slide, again, um, one more quote. This is again from Mike Barr, who's been our uh, fantastic supporter over the years. He's then a company, um, software development company, a consulting company. Mike is also an alumnus and he is also kind of uh, speaking to the fact that they're constantly on the lookout for top software engineering talent, right? There's never been um, a dull period. You know, software engineers are uh, really, really in high demand, right? Um, so essentially our, uh, the, the reason why we wanted to offer this program was to kind of meet this gap, like to kind of meet this gap, uh, especially Calgary, more in general around the world, uh, which you know there's this uh, insatiable appetite for qualified software engineers. And that's what this program aims to fill. We can go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, so what is the MN Software Engineering Program? So the MN Software Engineering Program allows you to quickly take advantage of this opportunity, right? This opportunity uh, of a uh, lot of job op openings in software engineering, the opportunity of uh, having, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, leveraging or pivoting your career to maybe more software centric uh, jobs, for example, right? So the program will help you stand out in this competitive job market, right? Uh, it will get you and allow you to uh, get software engineering skills. There are essentially two pathways. I'm going to talk about that soon. Um, if you're already a software engineer or you have a software engineering degree or a closely related degree, then you can actually finish the program in eight months. It's a really fast track program. You can graduate with advanced software engineering skills in eight months. But again, as I said, this program is also designed for people who have other engineering degrees like chemical, civil, right? Uh, we're trying to kind of either pivot to software engineering or use software engineering in their own discipline, right? So for these, um, students of this type of background, it's gonna take 12 months, still it's a year, right? So it's like a very fast track program. 
you can finish the degree in as early as eight months or uh, you know in 12 months if you don't have the software engineering background right again it's a completely course based program uh, with the eight month stream you get to take 10 courses to finish your degree uh, with the 12 month stream you take three extra courses so anywhere from 10 to 13 courses uh, spanning anywhere from eight to 12 months earns you a master's degree right uh, if you can go to the next slide so what are the qualifications you need? Uh, I'm sure the website would have all this information, but just to reiterate, you must have a four year undergraduate degree in engineering uh, with a GPA of three or higher over the last two years. Uh, and, uh, you know, as I said, the program can either be eight to 12 months duration. It's eight months if you have a software computer engineering type degree or a computer science and engineering type of degree, it's 12 months if you don't have that software engineering background from your undergraduate. Uh, some of the cool things about this program is very, very strong student support. You might ask me, why should I do your degree when there are so many master's degrees online and all these MOOCs courses like Udemy, Coursera, but in terms of uh, strong support, in terms of actual people helping you uh, with your assignment, with your uh, doubts and everything, uh, you know, that's where Shulik, I think, uh, uh, outscores everybody else. We have very strong student support for the program. Uh, and again, it's a full-time intensive program. One of the questions we get is, can I do this part-time? Uh, can I kind of uh, do it as I'm working? But the answer is uh, no, this program is intended to be a full-time program, an intense program. You spend eight or 12 months uh, intensive work and then you get out of the master's degree, right? Uh, financial support is possible. Uh, in the past, our students have uh, taken teaching assistantships to cover, uh, to kind of uh, give them an, an alternative stream of income. Uh, there are also possibilities to maybe pause your program a little bit and do a paid internship. Uh, so there is, it is possible to uh, kind of uh, tap into some financial support as well. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. So why should you do this program? Again, uh, if you are a software and computer engineer, uh, just by spending eight months, you really get some more advanced knowledge, right? The kind of knowledge you wouldn't be getting in your typical undergraduate degree. For example, you will learn more about uh, data science and machine learning. You'll learn more about uh, project management, entrepreneurship, which is really, really huge these days, especially in the software industry. So uh, the courses we have kind of uh, structured for you uh, kind of allow you to take your undergraduate software engineering uh, knowledge to another level, right? Um, and again, it's very attractive that you can actually graduate with a master's in just eight months. Uh, for people from the other disciplines, again, I kind of mentioned this earlier, it allows you to either pivot to software engineering or apply software skills in your own discipline. It really gives you an advantage. Again, think about digital transformation. Employers are looking for uh, you know uh, engineers with software skills, engineers with data science skills, machine learning skills, right? Uh, I have gone to I've gone and met many, many, many uh, big oil companies like Shell and Husky, and the message is very clear. Uh, we want our new set of uh, hires to not just be chemical engineers and oil and gas engineers. We actually want them to have some of these skills, right? So, and this allows you an opportunity to get that quickly in 12 months, right? Uh, it allows you to kind of uh, do a team-based learning with uh, your peers. And one of the exciting things about this program is that you actually get to work with civil engineers. You actually get to work with uh, software engineers, right? There's kind of like an interdisciplinary mingling of minds happening. Uh, and again, everything is team-based, like you'll be doing a lot of team-based projects and stuff like that, which is very, very crucial for software engineering. Uh, again, free tutoring and academic support and, uh, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, nice um, ecosystem support provided by the Schulich School of Engineering. We can go to the next slide. Uh, so it's a little bit tiny here, the font, but basically the program is structured as follows. So if you are coming in without a software engineering degree, then you will be doing the 12 month program. As you can see, the way it works is you have an entry in spring, right? So you come into spring and uh, over the course of spring and summer, you would take three courses, which are, we call them informally as a boot camp. It's like basically uh, you are uh, very quickly uh, learning things like uh, programming, coding, and software engineering, some of the basic concepts in a very, very intensive, very quick way, right? So uh, these two terms are going to be extremely busy. And uh, some of our students have said it's uh, kind of similar to drinking water from a fire hydrant or a fire hose. So kind of very busy, very intensive, but it allows you to kind of come up to speed so that in fall, uh, you start uh, taking some of the more advanced software engineering courses, right? Um, so. For those coming into the 12-month program, the two extra terms are going to be spring and summer. 
for those who already have the background, you would join from Paul, and uh, then you know both the cohorts kind of mingle. You would both take the same set of courses, right? Uh, again, there's a wide variety of courses, uh, courses um, spanning things like databases and uh, software engineering processes and architecture, uh, machine learning, uh, big data. Uh, so there's a lot of different diversity of courses. There's also a team design project, which our students almost always do um, in collaboration with industry. Almost all of our team design projects, which span two semesters, I think, um, uh, happen with industry support um, in collaboration with industry, right? And there are also uh, opportunities to kind of uh, do electives, like uh, depending on your interest, you could take project management and uh, innovation and uh, uh, entrepreneurship and so on, right? So roughly speaking, that's the course uh, structure. I mean, there's more information on the website, uh, the calendar, in case you are interested. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? And um, to finish off, uh, this has been a really, really, really popular program. I mean, it's been one of the big success stories for the Schulich School of Engineering. We started with a very small cohort of 40 students in 2019. And in the space of four years, we've almost doubled, right? The demand for this program has been very, very uh, robust. And student satisfaction has been amazing. Like uh, uh, most students feel very fulfilled. Initially, they feel a little bit uh, like uh, overwhelmed maybe because it's a new area, especially for those who are coming from a different background, but they really appreciate uh, the way the program is structured, the way how focused it is and uh, how to the point and how intensive it is um, in getting the skills which they need to succeed in the industry, right? So that's kind of reflected in the numbers. You can see a continual growth and almost doubling, right? And uh, there have been so many success stories in terms of industry engagement, like I said, most of our uh, projects are sponsored by industry, not just local industry, right? I mean, we have uh, students doing internship at Apple. Uh, we have uh, students either doing internships or being hired by Amazon, IBM, Tesla, you know, all the big players, Skip the Dishes, uh, local giants like Benavity, the Payson, uh, they're very, very consistent in supporting our students. Uh, in fact, I think uh, they look at the, the, the way it works is they kind of get in, uh, involved in the term project, the capstone project. And they kind of look at it as like a, more like a, like a you know, evaluation or kind of like a hunting ground for finding talent for their companies, right? Because they do want the talent and um, our program uh, kind of gives them the ability to kind of tap into the best of talent, right? So in terms of jobs, uh, I have not um, heard of people struggling to find jobs, you know, almost all of our graduates are able to find jobs in, uh, uh, either software development or software development in their own disciplines. So, so yeah, that's it from me. And uh, I think there are some more uh, uh, speakers uh, talk about, talking about other ecosystem supports, but I'll be around to answer any uh, specific questions uh, at the end of this presentation. Thank you, Dr. Krishnan Arthi. <laughs> I'd like to talk a bit more about some of the out of classroom experiences that really can enhance your degree and really help you advance and grow with, <laughs> within your career. So I do have a short video to share. We'll see if the sound works, but. Okay. I'm having some issues with the video, so I'm going to skip to the next slide for now. So within the past few years, the Schutz School of Engineering has invested a lot of time into updating our spaces and really making sure our students have access to state-of-the-art facilities. Uh, so in 2015, we opened a new wing of the building, our G block, um, and with this came our Maker Multiplex. And then in 2019, we proudly opened our Zeta. So Zeta is a hub of digital research and teaching innovation, and it's a vehicle for digital transformation. So here, researchers and students can come together to develop integrated digital solutions. By focusing on the big picture and creating digital systems that work together seamlessly across industries, Zeta will help us raise the bar for technology research and um, ultimately prepare our graduates to be leaders in the digital revolution. So within our Zeta space, we have a design lab for workshops and hackathons. We have a, a virtual reality lab 
with VR, augmented reality, and mixed reality equipment, um, as well as an Internet of Things lab, where students can explore sensor and software development and gather data. We have a full team of technical staff who are available to support students to learn more about how best to use data and our Maker Multiplex to make the most out of your degree. It's a really great way to kind of develop those hands-on skills um, and also learn, learn something new and make some friends. At the Shook School of Engineering, we also offer curricular, co-curricular, and extracurricular wellness programs for students, faculty, and staff. Uh, we really believe that uh, a holistic approach to well-being and that healthy individuals can help create a healthy community. So our Shulik Wellness Program includes a decompression zone. This is personally one of my favorite areas of our engineering complex. So there's ping pong tables and pinball machines and a really good way to kind of decompress between your classes. Uh, we offer workshops on healthy ways to handle stress. Um, one of the students' favorite activities is we offer pet therapy, so we actually get therapy animals come in and help students kind of relieve some anxiety and decompress um, during peak times of the year, such as midterms or final exams. Uh, we also have exercise bike desks throughout the building, so you can make sure to kind of maintain your daily movement. Uh, we offer free yoga and meditation workshops um, three to four times a week. And there are also many different services um, and workshops offered through wellness services on campus. Uh, there's one-on-one -on -one counseling appointments, exam um, anxiety workshops, and peer listening support. So lots of ways to make sure that our students are uh, living very full, well, and resilient lives. I'm gonna pass it over to Calvin Lack now to talk a bit more about the Faculty of Graduate Studies. Thank you, Ali. So one of the things that makes U Calgary unique is our My Grad Skills program. So My Grad Skills is a comprehensive professional development program designed specifically for graduate students. It provides access to a wide range of resources and training to help students develop the skills and knowledge necessary to succeed in their careers and beyond. What's great about My Grad Skills is that it's completely customizable to meet the unique needs of each student. There are many in-person and online workshops to choose from, covering a variety of topics such as leadership, communication, project management, career planning, and many more. But you know, that's not all. My Grad Skills also provides opportunities for students to network and build connections with other graduate students, industry professionals, and potential employers. My Grad Skills works with UCalgary partners to host events such as career fairs, guest speaker panels, and networking mixers to help students expand their professional circles and gain valuable insights into the working world. So in short, My Grad Skills is an incredible value, re valuable resource for graduate students looking to enhance their professional skills and prepare for success in their careers. One of the things that makes My Grad Skills and the University of Calgary very unique is our transformative talent internship. And I think uh, the other speaker sort of mentioned this earlier. So what this is, the University of Calgary's Transformative Talent Internship, or TTI, is a program designed to provide graduate students with opportunities to gain practical work experience and develop skills through paid internships. This is a skills-based internship. So through this program, students have the opportunity to work on challenging projects, engage with industry professionals, and apply what they have learned in the classroom in real world situations. The Transformative Talent Internship Program is designed, is designed to help students build their professional networks, gain that valuable work experience, develop their skills and competencies they need to succeed in the workplace. Looking back at some of the uh, past MEng software students, there have been about six students who have uh, participated in the Transformative Talent Internship through who have uh, uh, who, who are doing the ad managed software background. They have done internships for companies such as Virto, Dash Hudson, Imperial Oral. They work as facilities engineering students. They were development interns, software developers, full stack developers, full stack software developer interns. And they've gone on to the industry now. Some of them are working for Imperial Oil. Some are working for the companies that they intern at. So this is a great opportunity for students to 
to not only get that work experience and sort of maybe uh, get hired on by the company that they intern at. So, okay. so uh, some programs also offer awards uh, through uh, being a teaching assistant. There's paid internships that we talk about. There's also the awards database that you can search through. When there's slide is share, you can click on the awards database to view the awards that match your requirements. There's a whole list of awards that you can go through. There are different values. There are different uh, criteria and different deadlines. So please search through to see if there are any that you are eligible to apply for. You don't have to be accepted into the program when you apply for the awards. All you have to have is the stu your student ID number. Then you can start applying. Okay, next slide, please. Oh, graduate tuition and fees. Um, I think there were some questions on uh, the Q&A regarding the fees. The most up-to-date fees are listed on, in the graduate calendar. You can click on that to see what the course-based fees are for the engineering programs, what the general fees are for the students as well. Next slide. And something that's very important, graduate studies is not just about coursework, or research work, but it's it's about um, your personal growth and social connector as uh, connections and being a really rounded uh, person and gaining that well-rounded university experience. And this is where you as a student can take advantage of some of the opportunities in around the university to get involved, to get out there, to make that connection, to make friends through the graduate college, graduate student association, active living, through the International Student Center, U Calgary Sports Center, U Calgary Last Defense Lounge. These are all great organizations that put on different events for our students. Um, so when you are a student, think about, you know, how can you make the best of your university experience and really experience what university life is and what all U Calgary has to offer? Thanks. Thank you so much, Calvin. Uh, so that does bring us to the end of our formal presentation today. Uh, I see that a lot of you have been using the question and answer feature, which we really appreciate. Um, if you do think of any other questions after you attend the session, um, please reach out to us at mng.ucalgary.ca. Uh, we are happy to answer your questions there. One thing that I definitely wanted to highlight for this program is that the application deadline for the upcoming um, admissions period is March 1st. So if you are looking to start um, in 2023, I would highly recommend that you start your application process and get that submitted before March 1st. I'm just gonna go through some of the questions now. There might be some kind of commonly asked questions that we can read aloud. Okay, so what is the average entry level salary for new software MNG grads? Does anyone want to answer that one out loud? Yeah, I just typed the answer. It's kind of hard to say what, but anecdotally, talking to students, uh, seems to be in the 75 plus range, but of course it depends, right? I mean, what the position is, what the company is, and what you bring to the table, and it was really difficult to answer, but uh, typically I would be able to guess like 75 plus. Thank you. Yeah, decent number. It will be more than working in a non-engineering field. And there's some questions about the, the format of the courses, whether they're in person or online. So I believe all of our classes are offered in person at the university main campus.
There's a question on the uh, admissions process. Um, maybe you just want to touch on that, Ali. Um, I think you did mention it. I don't know whether this is someone. Um, um, I will defer that question to either Calvin or Srikant to kind of review how the admissions process works. Oh yeah, I can, I can brief on that. So once you apply for the program, uh, we would require certain documents from your side, including your undergrad transcripts, where we would be looking at your GPA for the last 60 units. So I could see there are a lot of questions on that. I'll just explain on that piece. So let's say I've done a four year undergrad degree. So what happens is while we look at the admissibility, we look at your last 60 units. So normally, uh, if you have done a four-year degree, last 60 units would be covered in the last two years of your program. That essentially means if you, of your entire four-year degree, if you have a good scores in the last two years, you stand a better chance because we are not looking at the entire four years for that matter as the admissibility. On the other hand, if you have high scores in the first two years and low scores in the last two years, you are on a slightly disadvantageous position. So that's the uh, situation in terms of GPA calculation. And while you apply for the program, you are required to do the GPA calculation from your side and you have to upload that. Me being said that, we would evaluate that GPA calculation. We would be running that from our side and then we would be finalizing on the GPA that has been arrived for your application. And accordingly, we would be contacting you <clears throat> if you're admissible. So the minimum GP requirement, there was another question regarding the minimum requirement that is 3.0 out of four, that is a minimum requirement. So if you're having a less than that, uh, it may not be a, a, you can still apply, but then the possibility of you getting a admission is relatively slim to be honest with you. So the minimum 3.0 is what we are looking at as a, as a program requirement. And while you apply for the program, you are required to provide your an official transcript, we have to upload that onto the application portal. And once admitted, we would be requiring your official transcript that has to come from your undergrad university directly. So the information regarding how to submit the official transcript and the conditions of your admission would be mentioned in the admission letter that you will be receiving. So that would answer all the questions specifically for your admissibility and the conditions assigned to that. Yeah, over to you, Ali. Srikant, do you know when students who've already applied can expect to hear back about their applications? So, uh, okay, normally what happens is once you apply for the program, since, uh, since we receive a lot of applications, it would take a couple of months for us to evaluate because application evaluation is a complex process, as you may be knowing. So it would take a couple of months. So if you have applied, like, for example, say, um, in the month of January, I would say you can probably expect a response by, like, end of February or early March for sure. Definitely, yes, you can expect that. But being said that a certain application could be more straightforward where we would be able to evaluate quickly and we would be able to give you the response, but certain applications may be slightly complex. So it depends on the nature of the application as well. But then whenever you have a question regarding the application or if you're confused, if you're still awaiting an application a decision after applying like a couple of months back, you can always email us to mnj2calgary.ca and we would be able to look at your file once again. We would be able to tell you by when you can potentially expect a response from our side. Over to you, Ali. Thank you. Okay, one more question I just saw here. So I saw a question that somebody has applied earlier. So when you apply again, please make sure you use the same UC ID. Do not create a separate UC ID. That is something which we normally come across because um, once you have been assigned a UC ID, when you try to create new one, that would create an IT issue. So if you have applied previously, if you have done any program in Calgary at any point of time in the past, please use the same UC ID while you apply again in the future. Uh, and there's been a few questions about the boot camp and when course enrollment will start. Do we have any details on that? Yeah, so uh, once you apply, Okay, so for example, if you're doubtful on which program, whether you should be applying for the bootcamp or for the fall intake, if you, if you are in doubt, you can always apply for the bootcamp and email MNJ to Calgary saying that you were in doubt and you applied for the bootcamp. And we look at your application. If we deem that your application is good to go with the fall intake, we could move it internally to fall and we could let you know your application has been moved to fall, if that is the case. So that would be the best approach for that. And yeah, what was the next question, Ali? Um, I think that answers that one. I, 
yeah, I lost the train of my thought for that question. So it, it was just essentially when they can um, start enrolling for the boot camp courses. So once you get there, you should be able to enroll. Yeah, now actually the uh, enrollment for the uh, spring summer courses are open. So if you are receiving an admit admission letter or a admit right now, that means you just need to create, a, you have to log into your student center, you have to initialize your registration. Once that is done, you have to enroll in the courses. So you'll be taking three courses during your spring and summer terms. That would be the preparatory course or the bootcamp courses. And then you proceed from the fall onwards. You take forward with the MN software program. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what programming languages are the main focus in this program? Devagar, would you like to answer that question? Yeah, so I think uh, the straightforward answer is Python and Java, but the real answer is uh, as a software engineer, you really need to learn to learn to code, right? So because programming languages are going to change, uh, when I was actually doing my grad studies, Java was all the rage, now Python is the rage, now Golang is becoming the rage, right? So you'll be exposed to two different languages, but I think really um, through the projects and other internships, so the capstone projects mainly, you would get the kind of uh, hang of how to adapt to new environments, new programming languages so that, you know, you have that adaptability because that's key to succeeding as a software engineer. You just can't have the fixed mindset of, okay, I learned Java and I'm going to really use that and only that during my lifetime and my money career, right? So, yes, so Python and Java for sure, but there will be things like uh, web development, uh, database development, enough, um, new things to kind of uh, force you to learn how to learn a new programming language. Thank you. Going through some of the questions. Walker, do you have any thoughts about this question? So can you comment on potential jobs um, in civil mining structural engineering with this degree? I did answer that one in the chat, mm -hmm. um, or I should have done. Um, and what I said was to that person, it would depend on what your undergraduate degree is and what job that company is asking for. So if that company is an engineering company, civil engineering company or a mining company, and they want software programmers, you will certainly be able to get a job. If they're looking for a mining engineer, then you would need to go by your undergrad degree. Thank you. There's a question of uh, Masters of Science and Analytics. How does this degree program compare to MDSA, Masters of Science and Analytics? Uh, I think this refers to the Masters of Data Science program. Uh, so that's very oriented towards data science as the name implies, right? It's not software engineering. So in the software engineering spectrum, data science is part of it, but it's not the only thing. Uh, so this program is uh, more broader in the sense that you get to practice different aspects of software engineering, not just data science and machine learning. Like you would be learning web development and databases and design, like conceptual design, architecture. Like that's very focused, whereas this is a bit broad. Thank you. Can you talk more about the interdiscipl interdisciplinary aspects of this program? Yeah, so I can take that. I mean, uh, like I said, you will be working with a lot of your colleagues, right? Uh, who are from different uh, disciplines. It's all team-based. Um, so there can be like uh, quite um, unexpected uh, ideas. Like you might be exposed to some machine learning problem in reservoir engineering, even though you are from a civil engineering background and vice versa. Uh, uh, you might learn how to deploy like uh, sensors and IoT in a project management and construction type of setting. 
uh, that you might find that kind of interesting given that your background is maybe in mechanical engineering. So there's a lot of this uh, uh, natural uh, mechanisms for intermingling of thought, right? So that's one uh, because of the fact that we are getting students from different disciplines. Uh, the other fact is that uh, we are in an engineering faculty, right? So doing software engineering in an engineering faculty is always uh, an advantage because there might be like a faculty who offers you a project in biomedical engineering, or uh, there could be some company who does uh, um, like remote sensing type thing, right? So uh, there is possibility uh, because it's an engineering uh, based program and there could be different types of engineering industry and we get like project proposals from different industry. Uh, yeah, so that's why, that's where I think the inter interdisciplinary aspect comes in. Uh, Um, there's a question. Can the course list be found online? Yes. If you go to the electrical and computer engineering program, the specialization in software, you'll see the list of courses that are required or and options. Sri Kanth, would you mind putting the. Yeah, and pulling website. that link. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, do you have any examples of some of the capstone projects that students have worked on? Um, I don't have specific examples, but I know the companies. Like I know that uh, many of them are uh, data science related. For example, the ones with IBM, uh, they've been most focused on um, applying machine learning to learn models about whether a particular well is worth exploring and uh, drilling, for example, you do that type of interdisciplinary projects. Um, we have like more software oriented projects in the sense that we have Benevity, which often uh, gives us uh, our students projects on how to build a backend, uh, maybe how to track uh, donors, corporate don donations, how to build a backend and a front end to track that, how to build a web portal, that type of projects. Um, uh, but beyond that, uh, yeah, I don't, we don't really track individual projects too much, but it really depends on the company and uh, the specific problem. But we do see a good diversity, like Payson and uh, IBM, for example, are more on the drilling oil side, whereas uh, Amazon and Benevity uh, would be more like the classical software engineering, where you build some portals, web portals, web development, mobile development, things like that. Thank you. Are you eligible to complete a PhD after completing a graduate program? I would say no, it's a terminal program because it's not a thesis based program. Uh, typically, a PhD requires um, a course based master, sorry, thesis based master's program. But I also know that some programs allow you to do a fast track PhD, with just an undergrad. So I think it would depend. Uh, this by itself will not really uh, make you eligible for a PhD, but there may be other pathways to do a PhD. Certainly what this, this course, would what, what might it do is enable you to talk to a professor who's very interested in the work you've done you may be able to start an MSc and then convert to a PhD. There's, so there are options available as uh, uh, I, I think Marie, Marie, Marie. Oh, this is a, a good question. How difficult is the program compared to undergrad engineering, especially for someone with little coding experience? Yeah, so I will be very honest. Uh, some students find it very um, challenging initially, uh, but we have, Excellent, excellent instructors. I mean, uh, the boot camp especially. Uh, we have instructors who are aware that uh, students are coming in without any software engineering background. So they do a really, really great job of kind of uh, introducing you to programming and coding in a very gradual and methodical and thoughtful way so that 
you are getting the skills, but you are not kind of sinking and getting too overwhelmed, right? So it is going to be uncomfortable, like a lot of progress to make any kind of uh, progress or a pivot. I know it, it does involve a little bit of uh, getting into uncom uncomfortable zones, right? Uh, so I won't lie. Um, like there's this impression, especially during the boot camp, that it is very intensive. Uh, that's why we had that nickname, right? Boot camp. Um, but majority of our students managed to come out of the program successfully. Uh, I don't have the numbers, but I think most people who start the program finish it successfully and they have positive experiences, right? And software engineering is kind of nice because it's problem solving oriented, you know. You write a program, you immediately see whether it works or not, right? If you don't work, it's a challenge. You know, it's like a problem-solving challenge, right? But you know, you get to see the output, right? You, know, you get to build something. Uh, uh, so most students find it find it very fruitful, and um, although they start a little bit overwhelmed, uh, intense, I would say maybe as intense as an undergrad uh, program, uh, but they they quickly settle down. The preliminary courses set you up for success. And most people, yes. if they do those preliminary courses, 90%, 95% get through that preliminary course. And that sets them up for the rest of the program. That's the reason the preliminary courses are given, is for those people without that software programming experience, that ability to concentrate on that in the first three courses. And so there's a really good success rate on those courses. And then as Professor uh krishna murphy says they then go on to complete the degree um sure kent do you know the application deadline for international students for this program for the international students application i think that's already closed for this coming um, fall 2023 intake, as well as a spring intake. Yeah, the so applications are closed for international student applications for, for the 2023 for this, and software for this, MNG. For the spring, yes. For software, but our other MNG programs applications will be open till March 1st for the remaining Masters of Engineering yeah. programs. So yeah. if you are interested in any of our other uh, Masters of Engineering programs, definitely take a look at those. Um, but for all the students who um, are domestic, um, the application deadline for a software event will close March 1st. There was a question about where this, whether this will be posted somewhere to rewatch. Yes. So anyone who registered for this webinar will be sent a link to view the recording after the event. And we will also be posting this to our MN software website. So is is I'll, the job? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'll I'll answer one question here. So um, regarding us, um, I already submitted my application for fall twenty three intake and have requested the TOEFL score. So basically, it means if your TOEFL or IELTS examination or the ELP scores is not yet with us, that means we would not be able to evaluate your application without having that piece. So it is not necessary that you have to get that document to us before the deadline. If you've applied before the deadline, that should be sufficient, but we cannot evaluate your application without that ELP document. So the earlier you can arrange it, that would be the best case scenario. And if you have not been successful for this particular term, that do not mean that your application file would be moved to the next intake, that do not happen. So if you are not successful in this term, that means you have to reapply again, for the next intake whenever the application window opens up. Yeah, that's it, Ali, over to you. Okay, so I think we are coming to an end of our most of the questions here. Um, if you do have any questions about your application, um, feel free to reach out to us again at the mnj.ucalgary.ca. 
it's definitely a bit easier for us if we can pull up um, that information on our end um, to give you a better answer to any of your questions. But we want to give a huge thank you to everyone who joined us today uh, to learn more about the MN software program at the University of Calgary. Uh, it's a really great program for those looking to advance their skills and their career, and we really hope to see you uh, at our school. Um, I want to give a big thank you to all of our panelists here this evening. And we look, yeah, like I said, we look forward to having you join us um, at the Schulich School of Engineering.